Hello and a very good evening. Her shooting by police in 1985 sparked the riots in Brixton. Cherry Gross was paralysed from the waist down when she was shot in her home by officers searching for her son. Tonight, the Metropolitan Police Commissioner apologised unreservedly as an inquest jury found eight failures in the police operation contributed to her death some 26 years later. Sir Bernard Hogan Howe said it was inexcusable that it had taken until now for the Met to say sorry. We'll hear more from the Commissioner in just a moment. First, let's cross to our Home Affairs correspondent, Guy Smith, who's at Scotland Yard. Guy. Yes, there is. The jury found that there were eight failures contributing to Cherry Gross's death. Failures in how the operation, the armed operation, was planned and how it was implemented. These included not properly briefing officers that Michael Gross, a suspected armed robber, was no longer wanted by police that there was a failure to adequately check who lived at the property or indeed carry out adequate observations on the house. And the jury also concluded that the officers should have called off the raid entirely during a police briefing but failed to do so. In summary, the shooting was preventable, a shooting that left a mother paralysed until her death. This story began 29 years ago. A police officer shot Cherry Gross in her own home in front of her children. The Met had been looking for her son Michael, seen here in the middle. He was suspected of being armed and dangerous. The shooting led to riots on the streets of Brixton. Lee Lawrence was 11 years old when he saw his mother lying on the floor, bleeding. She was saying she couldn't feel her legs, she couldn't breathe and that she thought she was going to die. So I was shouting to the shouting, this policeman, like, you know, what have you done to my mum? Like, what have you done to my mum? And, and I'm really hysterical at this point. And, uh, and then the, the, the police officer then turns the gun towards me and, and, and says, shut up. Well, the doctor just said I won't, will never walk again. Mrs. Gross spent the rest of her life confined to a wheelchair, eventually dying from her injuries in 2011. Her family say they've had to fight for legal aid to pay for lawyers to represent them at an inquest. And for the first time, they and the inquest jury heard how the police operation was bungled. An independent review found there were serious deficiencies in how the raid was carried out at this house here in Brixton in 1985. There was a lack of information about the layout of the property, about who was inside. Officers thought it was a squat. In fact, it was a family home, and they'd put Mrs Gross and her children at grave risk. By the end of the year, they knew these findings, but that was never shared with us. And to know that this information existed all this time, and this is the only opportunity that we've been exposed to it. And it's in the absence of my mum. I think it's, it's appalling. This is the man who shot her, Acting Inspector Douglas Lovelock, filmed here in 1987 during his trial at the Old Bailey, in which he was acquitted of unlawful and malicious wounding. During the inquest, he said he was nervous when inside the house, that the shooting of Mrs Gross at close range was a reflex reaction of unconsciously having his finger on the trigger and he apologised to the family. My mum was shot for no reason at all. That this was just a failure on the Metropolitan Police's behalf to do their job properly. Are you still very angry about that? It's hard not to be. This morning the jury found those failures contributed to her death that the Met had failed to communicate properly while hunting for suspected armed robber Michael Gross and failed to adequately check who was living at the address before the raid. And uh, Guy, the Met Police Commissioner today apologising unreservedly to the family. Yes, there is a, a complete mayor culpa by Britain's uh, most senior officer, Sir Bernard Hogan Howe, who's the Commissioner of the Met Police. He admitted his force was to blame. I apologise unreservedly for our failings. I also apologise for the inexcusable fact that it's taken until now for the Met to make that public apology. Sadly, this means that the person who most deserved to hear that apology, those words that we are sorry, is no longer here. However, 
Cherry's children, her friends and others are here and they too deserve an apology and I'm sorry for the years of suffering which our actions and omissions have caused your family. ACC de Mail's investigation into the incident at the time found that the raid should not have gone ahead in the manner planned due to the total lack of information. Well there you heard that he completely admitted that the operation was inadequate, that it had done irreparable damage to Mrs Gross and her family, that though things had changed since then and they had learnt a substantial amount from this inquest. He finally said that Cherry Gross's story was a powerful reminder to all officers of their responsibility when using force or planning to use it. Uh, from Scotland Yard, Guy, uh, many thanks. Our Home Affairs correspondent, Guy Smith. Coming up later in the programme.